Welcome to the Blessed Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Raquel Tolson. This podcast is here to help you experience being blessed that transcends a mere hashtag. Now, you guys know I'm a firm believer that blessed is a mindset and we have to make a daily decision to be blessed. All right, so if you're ready to be encouraged, enlightened, and entertained, then you are in the right place. I'm broadcasting on WYTV7 Christian Broadcasters Network, a nonprofit charitable radio broadcast that has a mission to empower, encourage, and educate. If you are enjoying the Blessed Podcast, please donate at www.wytv7.org. All right, we're still in the month of November and we are all just thinking about how grateful and thankful we are. Remember the challenge every day, post something that you are grateful for. Let's let's flood the internet with gratitude because remember when Reverend Sherry was here, she said gratitude is the language of God, okay? And if you, we are sponsored this month by Toshin's Publishing and you can go get the I Am Blessed journal so you can write your gratitude in your journal. My guest today, hey, you guys, it's the second week in a row that I have invited somebody who I didn't happen to know 20 years ago, you know how you, or is a member of my family, but she is my Facebook friend. Hi, <laughs> she is awesome. She is Rita Cornelia. She is an entrepreneur and she is a coach and she just does some wonderful things. So I'm going to let Rita tell us more about her. Welcome to Blessed Rita. Hello, hello. Welcome for having me. I said, welcome. Thank you for having me. I'm, I'm, I'm so used to always being in the host seat. That, that's my bad. No worries. <laughs> how, how's everybody doing? I am Rita Cornelius. I am the editor-in-chief of Uncensored Business Magazine. And it's a magazine for entrepreneurs because I want to show you in the superstar way that you are. I'm not going to celebrate you after you make it per se but I want to let you know every day that you get up and you do what you do you're amazing another love that I have is of course my womb healing services and what that is I like to go to the core of a woman I, I want to know the things that you're afraid to speak out loud and the reason why is because those are the things that you need to pinpoint and work on People can't know what they did if they wasn't there, if they don't know. So I definitely help women just bring it all full circle. I am also the face and host of Uncensored Business Tea. And what we do is we interview entrepreneurs and we talk about the good, the bad, the ugly of entrepreneurship because there's things like, why am I losing friends when I'm just trying to follow my dream? Why don't my family support me? Why do I feel like following my purpose is draining my reality? All these things are things that we go over. And I feel like if we're not having a conversation about the truth, we're not speaking at all. Oh, girl. So, you know, we finna have a good old time because <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> one thing I love is truth. Yes. Woo, so let me just start off because you are really um, big, like you said, a womb healer, really big with women. So can we just talk for a second or two yes. about Kamala Harris Come being on. the first black or just woman just really woman. first woman vice president how are we feeling about that well for me personally i feel like it's time and we could speak and scream to the tip top of our lungs equality all day but when something actually happens that brings that to the forefront then we're actually seeing things move so she's not just the example of what's to come she is the example now of what is and I think that's so amazing yes I love it mm -hmm. and just the fact that we I first of all why did it take us this long I mean you know what I mean because women have always done amazing things if you look at other countries women are running the countries I'm thinking of like you know the first thing that popped in my head 
is Germany. Mm-hmm. You know, women mm-hmm. are running the world. Why do you think here? What what is the problem with America and <laughs> and women? Well, you know what? Like I tell um, you know, most of the people that I speak to, we America is you've heard about the man cave, yeah? Mm-hmm. You know, all most wives, girlfriends, women in general, you heard or hear about the man cave. America is the man cave. And mm-hmm. and, and what I mean by that is when you look at the cars, when you look at the box of things to choose from as far as what to become in life, you you start to realize, oh, a lot of these things, you know, are here to benefit men, but not necessarily, not even kids like let alone women, but not even kids. So when I look at this country, I say, oh, we're inside of a man cave. So anything that's going to benefit the man, that's just what is going to be. And you're always going to feel like you're fighting because this is in our home, to be honest. Wow. The man cave. I never (laughs) thought about it, but yes. Look at it the trinkets, look at the toys, food. look at the things they get excited for. Look at um like look at the food that people get fries and a burger. If that's not a guy, come on. Like <laughs> like we're not even supposed to even be checking for things like that, but because we're so accustomed to it, where we're like, "Oh, okay, well this is a date. He took me to McDonald's." No, girl. <laughs> No, girl, that's not a date because that's not the date that you pictured in your head. You pictured, first of all, seafood of some sort. You pictured fruits and veggies of some sort. You pictured a nice drink and not a soda from of some sort. But with the man cave, it benefits him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wings. Wings is a is a day food. <laughs> you like you you know what I mean? Oh, we're gonna go on a date. Oh yeah, we're gonna get some wings and fries. <laughs> okay, well I might as well stay home and just make a fabulous dinner. <laughs> that I mean, is so funny. That is so funny. <laughs> okay, look, we're not gonna even get we're not gonna even talk them, but we're not gonna spend too much time on men and all that kind of stuff. We let's talk about women because one of the things I feel, and I feel like you are too, that's why I love like watching your post. One of the things like you, I think you even said it earlier, we have to be more in tune with us and what we're thinking about was that because I really believe a strong woman who really knows who she is can change anything. And all we got to do is, all we got to do is change our households. Mm-hmm. We forget about changing the world first. Let me change me mm-hmm. and my household because here's the thing where I really want women to hear me. Those, those men out there that's shooting up stuff, they listen to their mamas. Their mamas, you know, now some of them, their mamas might not be there and that's another problem. Mm-hmm. That's why we got to get ourselves mm-hmm. together. But mm-hmm. mothers can't control that, the violence out there. And I know women might be like, we can't be, listen, I'm not telling you to control everybody. I'm telling you to control your child. I control my child. He not out there shooting up people. So that's one less black man off the streets hurting each other. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, like if we start, if we start there, like we don't have to look at it as this big thing. Let's start at our house. Then once we get our house together, then we go and look at our sister's house. Like what my nephew's doing. <laughs> Where my nephews at? Okay, because I got a lot of nephews. I got it's ten boys, and I I got a lot of nephews. Me too. But you know what? I bet where my nephews at? What y'all doing? Yeah. Hey, this auntie, what, what's going on? What you you know? How you feeling? All of that. I'm all up in their business. Yep. And I'm like, this is what we are supposed to do. Really? But we got to get ourselves together. So let's talk about some of the things that women need to you know get together with their inside their woman with themselves let me start i'm gonna start with religion Mm. because religion was brought to us by who men now so and they don't abide by it at all but here's here's the thing 
if we look at the teachings of Jesus, it's not the same thing that you're hearing in most churches. It's not the same thing you're hearing from most of these people yelling at they Christians. Because if it's not about love, you ain't talking about what Jesus was talking about. <laughs> so, so I'm like, that's why I like to start for people, you know, it's like, can we just get into this whole love thing? And then, you know, it said love God and it said love others as you love yourself. So what I be trying to tell women, how you loving on you? Because how you loving on you affects how you loving on other people. And most of us not loving on us. That's why we can't love other people. And that's why, I, you know, mm, so I'm going to let you talk, man. <laughs> so when it comes to self-love, right, mm -hmm. I am the ambassador for it. I have, I share this with women all the time. There are certain things that I did not um, experience and I'm so happy I didn't because my self-love protected me. A couple mm -hmm. things that I couldn't, um, that I never experienced. I have never been envious or jealous of someone else. The reason why is because I came into this world um, with already so much on me so I would always want to see the beauty as an escape. So this was already my journey. Look at the beauty. You are not your situation. Look at the beauty. This is not your forever. So because of this reason, I ain't even had time to focus on anybody else because mm -hmm. when you do that, you're so focused on you. The only thing that people are going, oh, that, you know, she was a nice person or she's this or she's that. Why? Because you're focused. You're focused on you. And I tell people all the time, I am so focused and tuned in on me. I can't even change the channel to tune into you like at all. Like I, I don't know your business. I don't want to know your business. I got mm -hmm. my own stuff going on. I've always been this way. Mm -hmm. uh, most people will be like, well, that's not a good way to be. No, what you really want to say is I can't carry my stuff and I want you to carry it for me. And I'm telling you, I don't want to. There, there's <laughs> like, I'm not doing it because yeah. I guarantee you, if I gave you just a snippet of mine, you would crumble. And I'm telling you this based on the fact that you can't handle yours. And I know right. mine's heavier, baby. Like you understand what I'm saying? Right. So because of this reason, I have always been, and I come from a village. That's what I was born into. That's what I come from. That's what I'm clocked with. So that's another thing that this country is missing a village there's no village mm. everyone is completely competitive and it's like wait if your sister needs some clothes and when I mean your sister I mean another woman I don't mean right. your blood but if she needs some clothes you ain't gonna give it to her you rather go and talk about it you rather go like how you supposed to grow because nobody gets nowhere without somebody so mm -hmm. when you are from the village, you understand that concept. You understand if I don't have, my sister or brother have. It's not going to be nothing for me to go to them and say, hey, I don't have it, da da da, da because the same way they're going to come, come to me. And it's, it's, it's just going to be a triple, uh, uh, I'm sorry, a domino effect. That's what I come from. And I'm not going to lie. When I came to this country, Lord, I was like, <laughs> why is everybody so mean because when you <laughs> so wait where did you, you come from where, what country did you come I, from? I was born in the Bahamas but okay. my nationality is Haitian okay. and those two alone when it comes to the village that's all we know so when I came here the first thing that I was bombarded with a little girl just got off the airport, just got off the airplane, got in a taxi. I was with my aunt and uncle, looked out the window, and I saw homeless people. I had never seen that before. I had never, mm. because in the islands, if you're hungry, you're going to get fed. If you need some clothes, you're going to get clothed. If, if you need somewhere to sleep, you're going to sleep. So this idea of someone sleeping or else it completely traumatized me that instant and that was wow. my first entrance to this I was just like wait um did y'all see the person they were sleeping on the floor you want to go get them what's going on right. oh no this is how it okay so even at nine years old the first thing I said I thought y'all told us that this was a good place <laughs> because I'm used to waking up in the morning if I want some food okay baby go in your backyard 
go and get your produce, go and get your sticks, go and get your fire, go and get your pot, go to the well, get your water, purify it, live your life. If you want to go to the beach today, go walk to the beaches right there. Right. We were living. Yeah. So yeah. the kids of the parents that decided, oh, we're going to come here. We didn't make that decision because if it was up to us, we wouldn't have came. Like you feel right. what I'm saying? But yeah. everybody is sold what? the American, American dream. dream. Then when you come here, you realize, oh, this is not a dream. It's a nightmare because the things like uh, the first thing that I realized, like really concepted at probably 12 was God gave us this world for free, but somebody put a price tag on it Girl. it'd be, because the little things that when I realized we were paying for water, that blew my mind because like I just told you, we had a well in the back of our house. If you want to purify it, you ain't have Brita. You put a, you put it on the hot stove outside and that's mm-hmm. your purifier. So we didn't, like, I don't, right. we didn't know. But it, it, it just blew my mind. And I was just yeah. like, we going to be poor. <laughs> that's all I kept thinking. Like, oh, we fixing to be poor, y'all. Um, yeah. Where's the beat? Wait, you got to pay to get in there. You had to... <laughs> You girl, like your little, your little die your own self could not conceive what was happening. I couldn't, I couldn't take it. I couldn't understand it. I couldn't understand if seafood come from the ocean, that's mine. Like God put it here to feed me. Mm-hmm. So in my mind, and what I was accustomed to, if I go to the ocean and there's conch or there's crab, okay, you take it, you go home. Mm-hmm. You gotta buy it. So I'm like. <laughs> and then why do the meat that's another thing and i'm not sure if many people know this once you've eaten real food mm-hmm. you know something's wrong here mm-hmm, mm-hmm. immediately because you taste it it's very chalky it's very you like wait what everything is it tastes very lab And I was like, Mm. interesting. This is very interesting. And for years, I have always tried to, okay, stay away from the lab. (laughs) Make sure, you know, you eat grown and this and that. Because reality was, if you have eaten real food, you know immediately that this is not real food at all. So it it was all those things. And all I kept thinking was there's no village. And it's not just missing in this country is missing amongst black women. There is none at all. You know what I mean? Like it's, I don't know, but it's a big problem because can't nobody understand you like me and vice versa. And that's just what it is. We are the first and we are the now and we are the end. Well, you know what? I think a lot of it has to do, um, because we talk about this. Um, so like the real housewives, right. They show us, I'm going to use the ones of the, from Atlanta since that's the, you know, the black ones, but they show us a community of women who don't act like a village at all. And I mean, but they, they, they're always together, but the backbiting and all that. And then what happens is because you know, I'm just going to be real. I have a group of friends that I've had. I have a lot of people like you can't say you got a lot of friends. I got a lot of friends, like mm-hmm. real friends. I could call and be like, I need, I need $500. They mm-hmm. don't give it to me. Them friends. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, but we don't have that kind of relationship. Mm-hmm. And we look at that and we're like, what is that? But then other people see it and they're like, oh, that's how black women act. So now You know, and then, you know, then you have people that know that they haven't had friends like that, but then they get friends like that because they're like, oh, well, this is how we should be because that's what the women, the rich women on TV, you know, that they want to be like, that's how they got. And so now you got these people acting like them. And I'm just looking like, that's not how we act. I I I, I really believe that I actually have a village and I believe that there are more villages out there, but we just don't get shown because I'm a writer and it's just not, it's not enough drama. Yeah. It's, it's not, not drama. It's, you know, 
only Hallmark shows, you know, movies without a whole lot of drama, but then they don't use us. No, no. To present that drama they would never. Life that's, you know, wholesome and nice and, you know, happy. You know, they're yeah. starting to give us a couple of, you know, movies, but we we don't have, and then like for people like me who I will write some wholesome and show village but then trying to get somebody to produce that so it can be on TV for the masses. You, I can you, put it you out on the book. The quiet right now. can go to the book, but right now I don't have the money or the means or whatever to make sure it's on Netflix so everybody can see it. All I can do is make sure I have a book that everybody can read it, but then, you know what I'm saying? But people don't want to read. They want to watch TV. They want to watch the shows. They want to watch the movies. And even in the music. Oh, why girl. Why you think that only the music that, you know, constantly degrades us is what they show? I mean, they listen, they put on the radio. I, so there I, are other people I, out there that love Black women that their music's not being played. They would never show it. They would never show it. Um, I, I have been in this industry for about 15 years. And <laughs> I've seen it all. I've heard it all. One of the things that um, I remember once we were shooting a pilot for my own reality show when it was amongst the time of Run's House Mm -hmm. and um, it was another Black show that was out and it wasn't, you know, a mess. And I remember sitting with the producers and I told them, let me tell you something right now. With my family, we're in between the Huxtables and Run's House, literally. Me and that man been together since we were children. When I tell you we in love for real, camera on or off, it's not going to change. So I'm going to let you know right now, don't play with me. Girl, bye. The first filming, they tried some stuff and I was like, okay, now. The second filming, it was full throttle. Like, oh, well, can you guys argue with it? Didn't I just tell you we don't, what's wrong with y'all? Why don't you just put something out there that's positive and just chill? They don't want to hear that. They was also following me as a a wedding planner. So they wanted me to be dramatic at work. And I'm like, oh no, when y'all go, this is my job for real. Stop playing me. Like, (laughs) this is not a game. What is wrong with you? But here's the thing about, what I've learned, because everybody all my life, oh my God, girl, you need to be on TV. You're funny. You're this, you're that, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, cool. So what God did was present it to me, not only just in the camera crew and the this and that and the $350,000 God doggone contract that was really zero, but God presented it all to me. And I was like, I pass. Because see, what a lot of black people don't do because you're so in a rush to get to the money. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Sorry about that. that was my husband. You're such in a rush to get to the money that you forget to read. <laughs> Just like what you were saying. You forget to read and see me uh, being who my father is. I have no choice but to read contracts thoroughly. You don't understand. I'll get in trouble if I don't. You know, right. my father don't play that. So when I read it, Mm -hmm. I said, this thing say you own my thoughts, my ideas. If I spend a dollar of this $350,000, i am going to owe you interest on a dollar. So what if I spend $15,000, I'll end up owing you how much? If you don't take this mess and get out my face. But see... Mm -hmm again Mm -hmm. everybody's chasing something that's not even there it's an illusion it's not even there I'm telling you I've been in this game a long time it's all an illusion the perfect description of the industry high level marketing that's all it is Mm -hmm. nothing more nothing less Mm -hmm. high level marketing if you stay hot okay but that's if they want you to but the moment they don't want you to it's going to be like you never existed so what you need to train yourself is i believe in myself so much that i'm going to make it and when i say make it i mean i'm going to step into my purpose with me with god nobody else right when you do that 
when I tell you the floodgates will open because God, I tell people destiny and purpose don't care what you got going on. They don't care what you're doing. They don't care how much money you don't have. They're not going to leave. They're going right. to sit in your life. Like, girl, you know, you got to get up and go. What you doing? They don't care. <laughs> girl, that destiny and purpose, they real grown and real rude and they real intrusive. Get it together. I love it. You know what? Yeah. We, we got five minutes and I don't want to leave this. Um, I, I don't want to leave without them finding out how to get in touch with you. If they want to hear more from you, go to your, um, your, like your Facebook group. And so how can people do this? Um, get to <laughs> Follow me on Uncensored Business Magazine page, and you can also find me on Rita Speaks page. I also have the Goddess Speak page, and yeah, you can find me everywhere because you know the truth does not sleep, honey. It arrives. <laughs> and what was what's your <laughs> Facebook group again? My oh, my Facebook uh, group, you be dear black women. You be dear black woman. Now, and I love it. You have some really, really good stuff on it. So if y'all go and look, um, look up Rita, see what she's talking about. She has a, a wonderful community of women who share and post and you will, you will really enjoy it. We have to go. And I think this is the last week because uh, next week is a holiday. So I'll be back in December. And until then, remember what God has done for others. He will do the same thing for you. You just have to make a decision to get up, change your thoughts, and exercise your faith. See you next week.